Um, excuse me, brothers and sisters. <coughs> A little unexpected <coughs> interruption. So let's continue with this. Um, this is on Bird Strike. This will be the, the part two of Bird Strike, all right? The Bird Strike 2012, right? So here we're in John chapter four. Um, it was that verse um, in the portion beginning at verse 14. And um, we're at the point where Joshua, yes, he says to the woman at the well, he says, go call thy husband and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Joshua said to her, not unto, un means not, all right? That's a little correction right there. You know, let's to get the real power out of the word. Jesus didn't say not to her. He said to her. Um, Joshua said to her, thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. Now, Joshua, he's saying to her, now you're speaking the truth. It's, it's a very interesting scene, you know what I mean? It's a very interesting scene to study and to meditate. You know, you can study, read over it, and get the word in your mind. You know, remember, you know what I'm saying? Use your, use your, um, use your um, remembrance, you know what I mean? Use your memory to remember. It's very important for you to, to write these words on your consciousness because these words are living. You understand? And these words, what, what, the, what the Christ say? Christ says that if heaven and earth pass away, what did he say? Won't pass away my word. And he says to his, 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 his disciples and to the true Jews, and to the black Jews, he says to them that um, if his word is in them, you understand, and they are uh, in his word, they are one, you understand, and therefore they overcome. So the word is so important. The word is, as we mentioned here in this le lecture right here, the word is the logos. It's the logic, and we use the matrix as a modern bit of mythology, you know, as a modern mythology, in a sense, to um, draw parallels and examples. And because our sister Sophia Stewart, a, a, an African-American, therefore a Judahite um, sister, is, is, one, is the one who is responsible for that, the original seminal ideas, in a sense, she's the mother of the matrix, it, it all makes even so much more sense. Because even before we knew that, we recognized something is different about this particular movie. You understand? And a lot of folks have already recognized that for different reasons. Some accept the truth of Sophia Stewart, as we do. Some reject it. But we use the Matrix as a kind of a modern, a modern metaphor, in a sense, a modern myth on a, on a certain level to point parallels, you understand, to the truth. You know, because most of y'all and most of us, don't really understand the context of the Bible because we're living in a new world. You know what I'm saying? We're living in a, in, a, in, a, in a new reality compared to what the Bible, the Bible scenery, the outer world of it. You know what I mean? The out, this is the agricultural society, and most of us are living in the cities. So it's a little uh, challenging, not difficult so much unless you don't want to do it, but if you have a love of the truth, it's challenging. If you don't have a love for the truth, it's going to be difficult. So it's really where you apply your love and where you apply Jah's love. You understand? He says that anyone who loves him keeps his commandments. So to keep it, you've got to know it. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to um, hide, as David says, hide that word deep in you. Put that word deep in you. You know, so when we feel like we're lonely or, or you know, we come out of that collective unconsciousness and, and others that we love, they don't want to hear, we have to use that time, you know what I'm saying, we use that time um, 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 in, in, a, in, a, in a good way. You know what I mean? We have to use that. That's quality time, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you right now, we remember those dispensations. You know, we had the opportunity and time, and, and overall, not to the extent that we should have, but overall, we try to use that time um, um, in an edifying way or constructively, all right? So anyway, John chapter 4, um, going on after the truly part, you've said truly, verse 19, the woman saith to him, sir, and we point this out before, sir is related to Sirius or Cyrus, the Cyrus and sir connection is there, 
um, and and as a document um, witness of the stars points points that out as well. She says to him, "Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. I perceive that you are a Hebrew nabi. You are a nabi. You are a news bearer. You are a nabi." Now the word nabi, when we get into the etymology, the word nabi. Um, from the Ethiopic, the Hebrew, the Afro-Shemitic, it links with Anpu or Anubis. You understand the announcer. You understand the crier, the caller, the announcer, the prophet on that level. When we get to the root of what prophet means from it in its original context. That's very important in its original context. She says, our fathers worshipped in this mountain. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say, ye means you all. So it's not just a ye, you, one, Joshua, say, but she's saying that all of y'all as Jews or as Judeans, you understand, y'all as Judeans, y'all say this. It's like somebody said, y'all Rasta, far I say this. Ye say this. So this is the context of it. She says that, and ye say that in Jerusalem or Yerushalayim or Yerushalayim, is the place where men ought to worship, is the place where men ought to worship. Now, the word worship, oh, that is so interesting because folks don't, don't sign off on that word worship just yet. A lot of folks, you know, they, they talk about, yo, worship, Haile Selassie. They talk about, oh, they worship this, they worship that. But we have to get to the root of worship. You understand? What does worship really mean, not just in the English sense. We have to know what the English, what we speak, means but in the, the, its original sense. So behind the word worship are, are nuances of context that are very, very important because we'll see later on, or we'll see actually in the other gospel, um, Mark's, no, Matthew's gospel, where it says that the disciples concerning worship, you know, when we come across these points, it's better to just um, tune up on these particular points. Here it says right here in the last chapter of Matthew, Matthew 28 and 16, it says, Then the eleven, eleven disciples went away into Galilee, or Galilee, into a mountain. Now this is connection with mountain. A mountain where Joshua, Jesus, had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. What? When they saw him, they worshipped him, right? Um, but some doubted. Some doubted. If we go to the Old Testament, we'll find that, that, that when Yosef, Joseph, saw, saw the heavens and the, and the prophecy written in the stars, he communicated it, and he said that, you know, how it will be the 11, I think the 11 planets, the sun and the moon, bowing to this, you know, bowing to him. You know what I'm saying? Which obviously in the context would have been another planet. Bowing to him. And, and the brothers, you know, you, you know how some of our black Hebrews are, don't you? you know, they, they were upset. They were like, what's so special about you? You know, special about you. You're just another one of us, you know what I mean, so forth and so on. That's where you can understand the humanity of Beta Israel and that humanity being black. Now, when it says that they, they, they worshipped him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. They worshipped him, but some doubted. That's interesting. Now, what's the context of that worship? Make a note of that, and that's another lesson we have to touch on and, and try to do your homework and study right now on that word worship. You might find out exactly, you know, um, what we're, what we're going to hit on because others know it. I'm just saying that we need to know it. Don't take any word in the Scripture for granted. Don't take any word for granted because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, you understand, and the Word was God. And the reason why people don't know the true God is because they don't know the true Word. It's, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, I'm not talking about a special set of writing, even though ultimately it leads to the holy books, but they don't even know the basic words they use. This is why um, law, things like law, um, continue to dominate them and, and, and also be necessary on a certain level. You know, like um, a lot of things that people could work out among themselves, they go to court, and although the other person was telling them that's foolish, that's frivolous, they have to get to court, and a judge say that's frivolous, and sometimes, you know, most times they say, okay, now I know because the judge told me, you know, because you don't know the word. The judge is going to tell you what the word is, and he's going to rule it, generally speaking, in the context of what he's interpreting is the true interpretation of the word or words used. So here the woman is saying to Joshua that it was the Judeans that said that Jerusalem is the place, that Jerusalem is the spot. Now, 
in our Torah studies, the Rastafari Sabbath studies and, and the Sabbatical scrolls, we've been touching on um, Exodus and we're now in Leviticus. And in Leviticus, it also speaks about the place where he sets his name. And in Exodus, it speaks about there'll be a place where, where, where Yahweh will set his name, where Jah will set his name. And that's where the tribes are supposed to gather. That's the context. That's the biblical context of it. But now this New Testament time and point, there was a division between the Samaritans and between the Judeans, and it was a religious division. They both considered themselves to be Israel, you understand? But they had their religious um, denominational differences, which is kind of interesting, this kind of north and south um, division. We find it in, in, in the scriptures, in the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. We find it in, in the manifestation even of, of, of um, prophetic Israel or of Ethiopia likened to Israel between the north and the south. We find it in America between the north and the south. We go to different countries around the world. There's some interesting north and south, which also kind of links with the whole polar shift. Well, if you think about it on another level, as above, so below. So that shifting up there also is having a, 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 a um, resonance down here. Now, if people resist that, you see what I'm saying, or are, or, or, um, how can I say, are out of bounds in a sense. Uh, let, me, let me put this in, the, in another sense. Um, First of all, because people have built up an artificial world against nature. You see what I'm saying? Now nature is trying to realign itself. So that means that they, 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 they are in slippery places, in other words. I mean, that's the best way to say it. They are in slippery places, and you have to go into the sanctuary to recognize that particular, that particular truth. Otherwise, when you see what you see, it's going to frustrate you. You understand? It's going to frustrate you. A lot of the brothers and sisters, they declare their faith, but they're very frustrated about what they're seeing, and they're not in that peace. And part of, it, part of that is because they are not in that full knowledge. They have a knowledge. They have an awareness, but they have to build themselves up. You see, because if they don't build themselves up, they're going to be weak. You see, so they have to build themselves up in, 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 in heart. You know what I'm saying? And in mind, you know, and, and based on the word. This is why we have to use our study time, our reading time, our meditation time. We've got to use time, such as what we have opportunities, you understand, such as we have presently in, in this seemingly peaceful state, seemingly. You know, the peace, the sudden destruction to come, you know what I'm saying? But while we have the peace, when the sudden destruction comes, you understand, there's only so much you can do. Either you're going to survive, either you're not. So you really can't frustrate and worry on that. But you have to prepare because, see, if you don't prepare and you survive it, wow. If you prepare and you don't survive it, you still overcome if you were in the truth of the word in that true relationship. You understand? Because the word, you understand, the word is that guarantee. You understand? Now, if you prepare and you survive it, you will have the advantage. You understand? It's not just in this life in this world, but also in the world to come, you know, and in the age to come. After, after these, um, you know, after these, these, these destructions be overpassed, so to speak. So there was no other place. Now, Yeshua knew that things were, were changing, you know what I'm saying? And he came to be a witness to that. So he says to her, woman, believe me or admit in me. You understand? Emanin, you know, believe or admit in me the hour cometh. The hour cometh. You know, the time is coming when ye, you all, shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. So he's saying, listen, time is coming that, you know, I know your people or my people, they have this thing going on. You understand? But the time is coming where in neither spot, you understand? We're going to worship God, you know what I'm saying? And neither one of these sacred sanctuaries, sacred holy place, you know, some people worship holy place, like today. People say, well, that's my church, and this is my church, so forth and so on. They haven't really found the church within. They're not really grounded, you know what I'm saying? Or they have not found the true brother, 
brotherhood or fellowship apart from place or building or, or you know, it's like people say my country and you know, all, into all this nationalism, America, America, no matter what, America got to be first. You know, a lot of that's insane. It, it, it's good politics, you know what I mean? But a lot of it really is really insane in the big picture sense. You understand? It's like trying to put human or mortal will against the will of the almighty. That's a losing proposition. You understand? I mean, I mean, all the, you know, I mean, you could look at the, you know, like a better, you know, I mean, look at the odds on that, you know, it's a losing proposition. Um, he says, he says now to her, neither in, 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 in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem will you worship the Father. Ye shall, ye worship, ye know not what. He's saying to her, you don't know what you worship. That is deep. You understand? Because a lot of people say, yeah, I know what I worship, and we'll say it out of a lot of pomp and a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of we'll put a lot of, a lot of, a lot of psychic energy into it. But when we're quiet, when we're really alone, when we're in real situations, do we really know? Have we really taken the time to seek him, you understand, to seek the truth and to really find the truth for ourselves. That's the key right there, right there. So Yeshua is saying, let's just cut to it. You don't know what you worship. You know, ye, ye worship, ye know not what. Ye worship, ye know not what. We, he's saying we, remind me of his majesty, we in Ethiopia. I'm talking about Ethiopia of his generation, not, not this present time of, you know, this time right now, this Ethiopia right now, so it's transitory. You understand? It's, it's changeable. It's, it's changing. We know what we worship. So he's saying that ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. I mean, that's a shocking. <laughs> that's shocking right there. I mean, from a Christian perspective, people say, why well, are you studying the Torah and all of that? That's like, oh, you're going back to Judaism. Oh, you're legalists. We're not under legalism. You know, all these kind of arguments, these, these specious, you know, arguments and everything like that. Um, Christ himself says, you don't know what you worship. He said that salvation is of the Jews. Now, we have to find out for ourselves what did he mean? What is, what is it that he was speaking to? You know what I'm saying? What is it that he was speaking to when he said that for salvation is of the Jews, but the hour cometh. He keeps talking about this hour, this time is coming. This hour cometh, and now is. And now is when the true worshipers, so he's not true work. He didn't say true believers. Notice that. He didn't say true believers. He said the true worshipers. So even in the um, Shemitic or even in the Greek, it's a different word it's pointing to. It says the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. It's interesting because he's now bringing also another aspect into clarity. He is bringing the Father. The Father. You see what I'm saying? The original so-called sin was based on ignorance of the Father. The sin of this present world system is based on that same ignorance. It's the ignorance of the true Father. You understand? The true Father of our black Lord and Savior, Joshua, or Jesus Christo. So he says so right here. He says that they will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. You understand? In spirit, so we've been with, with the truth here. The truth, you know what's interesting? Truth is usually, and many times, revealable. Spirit is, you know, spirit might, you know, you have to feel it. He who feels it, in that sense, knows the spirit. You know, uh, the spirit, like you can see the effects of the spirit, you know, of the wind, but you can't see it. But now truth is that other aspect. So when he says spirit and truth, he is speaking of the dual truths. You understand? Or the ma'at. He's speaking of this ancient, this ancient um, theology, this ancient Afro-Shemitic theology. In ancient Egypt, they called it ma'at. But you will see the reflection of it right here in the Bible. The difference between Egypt in that sense and the Hebrews is the Hebrews on the, on the mashu did not use, um, did not use the, the, um, the pictographic images, but tried to get beyond the pictographic images into the spiritual side. They went from the true, the true images, 
You understand which the interpretations started to fall to idolatry and brought it to the true spiritual side of it. You understand? It's like kindergarten. In kindergarten, you remember how they used to use all these big kind of pictures. You understand? To, to demonstrate and describe to little children a circle, a square, a this, a that. You know, the, things were writ large in a sense. But then as one got older, one began to understand the spirit of these true, these true types, in a sense. The spirit of these true types. And such it is. God is a spirit. So God, he says, is a spirit, and they that worship him must, not might, you know, but must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, of course, a lot of folks will be like, whoa, how you know God is a he and not a she? Because it's clear, it's obvious, it's evident. You know what I mean? That's another point right there about the whole gender. But then it says that Christ and Christ is neither male or female. But the point about gender goes beyond the physical. Gender actually begins from the, the spiritual. You have to understand gender, the idea of gender or male or female. The physical is the end product. So what ones are trying to do is take the end product and define the beginning. You understand? No, you have to actually trace it. You know what I'm saying? Trace it through the anthropology, the mythology, the spirituality to the beginning, and then you will know. Okay, now that is not a lot said, but, but we wanted to touch on that aspect about spirit and in truth because of what we're saying right here where it says, for as many are led, we're back in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God. Wow, the spirit of God. God is a spirit. So if God is a spirit, does God have a spirit? You know what I'm saying? Because the spirit of God, Christ says that God is a spirit. See, these are the things to meditate on. These are the things to reason on. These are things that one time and hopefully again, Rastafari and the faithful Ethiopian Hebrews will come together to reason on these things. You understand? To reason on it. To, to seek the truth. To have, if you have a love of the truth, you're going to seek the truth. You know what I'm saying? They are the sons of God. So he's saying that those that are led of the Spirit of God, they are the children of the Bani Ha Elohim. They are Ye Egziyabi Her Lijoch. They are the children, in other words, of God. For ye have not received, I and I have not Kabbalah, Ebele. We have not Kabbalah received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But ye have received, have Kabbalah, the spirit of adoption or legionet, the spirit of, of childhood. You understand? The spirit of adoption being called a lich, being identified with the, with the Almighty as a bane, as a child, you understand, or, or a bot, you understand, as a, as a, as a bane or a bot or a bot, as a son or a daughter. You understand? Of the Father. Whereby we cry, Abba. We cry, Abba, Father. Now, it's interesting because Abba Kedus, the Abba Kedus connection here in Rastafari Revelation is very, very important. So here we have scriptural documentation. You understand? Here we have, um, here we have scriptural documentation. Now, we have to check that out with the true signs of Abba Kedus. And we'll find that it is one and the same. It is one. Yahweh Ahad. Ahadu Amlak. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. So the Spirit of God must be a witness with our spirit. So there's a Spirit of God and we have our own spirit. Now this is a high level really of, of true Christian Kabbalah. A lot of folks when they talk about Kabbalah, they're not talking about so-called Jewish, you understand, Jewish Kabbalah as received through the Khazarians, some of the more faithful Orthodox um, and occultic um, Khazarians. Some of what they say you know, is, is true. You know what I'm saying? But what most folks don't recognize is that there is a Kabbalah or a Kabbalah of Jesus Christos. In fact, the original Christianity was manifesting the Kabbalah, and that was one of the so-called schisms between Judaism of of first century and 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 the Nazarene movement 
is because they were looking at this spiritual archetype and these spiritual principles, and there were two interpretations that were clashing. There was the so-called orthodox Judaism over the Pharisees and the Sadducees and their Kabbalah, and there was the Kabbalah of Yeshua. There was the teaching and testimony of Christ. And even some of the, the, the Pharisees and scribes, they had come over to Yeshua's, they recognized, even Paul, we see Paul as a very good example. Some say Paul is a Gnostic on a certain level. And that Gnostic element that some see within the scriptures, the true Gnostic, because there's a false, there's an ignosis and there's a gnosis. You understand? And then there's the epinosis. You understand? So that's part of the, the, the Hellenian dialectic of, of, of theology. There is gnosis, there's ignosis, there's knowing, not knowing, and there is epinosis or epigenosis, which is full knowledge. The Bible in, in the Greek text, you know, in the Septuagint, it speaks of epigenosis, and epigenosis is full knowledge, and that implies that we might know some things, but do we know it fully? You know, like look at Moses for a moment. Moses was learned in, in the, the wisdom of the Egypts, right? So he had, the, he, he had that part of the knowledge, but then it also says that he was mighty in word and deed, so on that level of the two truths manifestation, he was mighty both in the word that he could speak it, he understood it, he had the intellectual, you could say, portion of it, and also deed, he could actually do it. He could, he, so he was like a great magician from a certain perspective, or you could say a, 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 a master, you know, and one of the scenes in the Gospels is interesting, the scene that we have on um, Mount Tabor. You understand Mount Tabor, you know, with um, 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 Mashu or, or Muse and, and um, Eliyahu, you understand, and Hilo or Eliyahu on the mountain, you understand, with Yeshua. You know, that scene right there is very, very, is very, very interesting because it is demonstrating, you understand, the reality of this. Not just, not just nowadays where a lot of people are beginning to recognize that, you know, the Bible was correct. But the interpretations, many, too, too many of the interpretations that were received through the Gentile whitewash or the Gentile Christianity were, 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 were horribly wrong. You understand? They caused wars. They caused slavery. They caused millions of loss of life. They caused the ruin of the ecology, so forth and so on. And time is, is, is up. You know what I'm saying? Time is up. And the, and the bird strike, for example, and the black beer killings, you know, and other things happening. You know, I mean, to, you know, what's so interesting? If it was other countries around the world, like somewhere in Africa, where a bird strike like this happened, they probably would have said, well, why don't they try to move the airport or redirect flights or something like that or another thing? Here they try to make the birds. You understand know the bad ones, you know, the bird struck the, the plane, and even the pilot says, no, actually the plane hit the birds, and they saying, why are the birds changing their flight pattern? And then they keep focusing on why all this change is going on. And here's where you see a pretended ignorance. But that ignorance is because of the material, the, the vanity side of it. You know what I mean? Because, because money, in a sense, has been made a god. And the Bible says the love of money is the root of all kind of evil. For this false, for this false idea, for this false God, you, you, you can already see what people would do and what people are still doing. You understand? There is a judgment. You know, there is an end to it. And I'll just prove it to you. It hasn't always been going on. But the liars try to make it seem like this has always been, ain't nothing new going on. But then they rob you of the true knowledge of the past. So you really can't say that, that, you, that they're wrong. You say, well, yeah, they're, they're right. This has always been going on. How do you know? Well, you saw it in this movie. You saw it in that movie. You read about this in that, that highly edited, you understand, book, which is basically to just breed more unconscious people. You understand, more unconscious people. But now we have the Internet <laughs> on a certain level, you know what I mean, which is, is, is somewhat of an equalizer. I mean, if you can find it, most folks are kind of passive and lazy, so they don't really go and look up, yeah, I'm passive and lazy. You, you know what I mean? Something that I've only found, I won't say by chance, but it seems by chance, 
and sometimes that, that makes me think about something and say, you know what, let me see what's out there. You know what I'm saying? Just see what's out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, you should trust the Spirit of God mingling with your spirit to tell you and show you what the truth is. So the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children, that we are the children of God. Children of God, sons of God, same word. So that means sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. There's, there's no sexism, you understand, in the true God. And if children, then ears. So if we are children, that means we are ears. Like if, if our father is a, a, a rich man, right, and we, are, we didn't know it before, but now we know we're his children, right, that means that we can inherit of our father. But there's an interesting thing about inheritance, right, ears of God and joint ears with Christ. So we are ears of God, but we are co-ears with Christ, that, because Christ is our big black brother, the black messiah. You know what I'm saying? Yeshua HaMoshiach. He, he is our big brother, our true big brother. But you see how they have, have flipped the script? You know what I'm saying? They call themselves big brother. No, they are the big other. They're the big other, not the big brother. Our big brother is the true Christ, is Joshua, is Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior, our big black brother, the black Messiah, the one whom they've been consciously fighting against, you understand, since COINTELPRO. COINTELPRO is, is the biggest antichrist operation in the universe, and you better believe it, you understand. And because that was somewhat evilly successful, we are seeing what we're seeing and witnessing. We're on the cusp of judgment and days of tribulation. So get prepared. If so be that we suffer. You see what it says? If so be. If it's so. If it's not that we suffer, if we don't want to suffer, then, well, it, we're not ears. Straight up. You understand? I mean, these are the terms. You see, a lot of folks, there, there is, uh, what is it, um, um, un unconditional. They say, God loves, un that's a lie. And so we had to just say, that's a lie, straight up. Folks, some folks might not like it. They, they might be ignorant. They might be hyped up, whatever, like that. That doesn't really matter. It don't matter. You understand? They're going to know the truth one way or another. We hope they know it before they, you know, before they be judged by that ignorance. If so be that we suffer with him. If it's, see, we're co-ears with Christos, with the black Messiah. We are co-ears, not just we only as black folks now, but, but, but all nations. This is all those who call, for all those who call themselves Christian, you are co-ears with the black Messiah. Now, you might have a problem with his humanity, with the fact that he's black. That is your problem, you understand, but it's the truth. You understand? You can wrestle with all you want. You can deny it if you want to, but you only do that at your own peril. You understand? Check it out. Study. Seek the truth. You'll find it. You understand? That's not the only point in this, as some of our brothers and sisters focus a lot on the racial aspect. That's just the point. You see, and, and there's so much has been put out to um, suppress and whitewash. We have to make this point. You know, some people say, well, I got to talk about race. It's not about race. It's about, oh, y'all haters. So, no, y'all hate. Y'all hate Jah. A lot of folks out there hate Jah. You understand? Y'all are the real haters. So the word has, you said they manipulate the word. That's how magic, that's how, that's how, that's how you do spells, by manipulating words. When you manipulate words, you manipulate consciousness. When you manipulate consciousness, you make people see things that, that, that are not there. And this is what they have been doing. So this seems strange, what we're saying, because that means that their manipulation of your mind the spell that he put on you has been that deep, you understand, and that so-called seemingly successful. And you might have to suffer, you understand, mentally, psychologically a little bit, and, and, and really recognizing that a lot of things you thought were true are not. So suffering is not just physical suffering. It may be physical, it may be psychological, it may be spiritual, it may be a combination, you understand, of, of, of all of those. But in Yeshua. You understand, in the God and Father, our black Lord and Savior, we have overcome because already written, so we shall overcome. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also, that we may be also glorified together, that we may be shekinahed, shock and awe, shekinahed together. We may be glorified together. Now, here's a section, the creation, the creation, delivered from suffering and death. Kept for the sons of God. Kept for...
for the sons of God. This is the subscription rate here. And let's just show you this. This is the subscription rate here. Well, finger is, see the subscription rate there, right? This section right here, right? Right, kept for the sons of God. Now, we have this up here, and we touched on this. Let's see if we can take this down for a moment and see if we can document this right here. All right, um, because it's, it's, it's a fact that you're going to see much more um, of, of um, the world versus nature. Yeah, that, 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 that works right there, doesn't it? Yeah, the world versus nature. You understand? The world, right? The, the world, that's not too dark, is it? Versus um, I said nature, but let's put creation. Let's put creation, right? The world versus creation. This is what this section here in Romans ch chapter 8, verses 18, verses 18 to verse 25. Verses 18 to 25. Let's put this here. Okay, Romans. Romans. It's interesting, Romans is, the book is Romans too. You know, let's make a little note of that. Um, we could say thank you, Nicki Minaj, right? You know, we say thank her because she's basically saying that there's a, there's a possession. There's a possession that's, that, that's a, little, a little white boy named Roman. Now, it's interesting, this little white boy named Roman, right? Because... This is speaking to a certain type of the architect. Now, what her problem is, um, we have not diagnosed that, you know, only can see certain signs of something. But what's interesting, we use this to kind of point a kind of a reference point. It's a little white boy. It's like a Dennis the Menace. They brought that show back too, Dennis the Menace. And there's something about this whole, this whole archetype. Have you noticed that whenever a white man does something, they always try to make it seem like he's, you know, like, like, like he's a little boy. You know, they always do that, or, you know, they try to make it seem like he's just sporting around, like boys would be boys. You remember that kind of excuse that they did, and they still do, but they just change the word. They change the spell. You already know, know that. You already know that trick. So now they use other words, and they give this false scientific justification behind it. So this is chapter 8, right, chapter 8, verses 18 to um, verse 2, 5. Right, two five, right? And it is speaking about how the creation is delivered from suffering. Mm -hmm. Now what you hear a lot is about the um environment, saving the environment. You know, the this comes under the quote how, how you call it save the planet. Right? This this go, come from save the planet. Let's all get together and donate the, our monies to these globalist organizations, to, the, to this global Leviathan, and, and let's save the planet. Mm -hmm. In other words, let us support these same polluters and their accomplices in continuing, by and large, to do what they have done, you know, saying with our consent. Basically, this is getting consent for what they're doing. So they're talking about how we're going to save the planet, and they recently had Earth Day. Mm -hmm. The question is this. Does Earth Day, let's put this right here, does, does um, Earth Day, as they call it, right, does Earth Day include the birds, right? Does the, the, is, is Earth Day for the birds as well? Is Earth Day for the birds or Earth Day is not for the birds? And you're probably going to hear about the black bears or you heard the, the last year there was this killing of all these exotic animals that some, some white guy, he had a ranch and some land and he went, allegedly he went crazy or something, released all the animals and they had no choice but to shoot down and hunt down these animals and even the animal rights guy kind of, he came on there and said, you know, there was, he justified it in other words so there wasn't a big... Some still had an outrage on it, but the media had, you know, its um, official, official environmentalist 
you know what I mean? It's official environmentalists said that, well, that was justified. Like now in this whole birds thing, they say they're going to have to do something to eliminate these bird populations, so forth and so on. They show some pictures of, of some of the... Um, the foresters or whatever they want to call the organization, shooting, you know, shooting and watching the birds and shooting them and trying to shoot them and everything like that. And <clears throat> we only have a beautiful earth, right, because of those creatures, not because of this technology. The technology is ruining, is ruining things. You know, it's not the technology, but those who, those who direct the technology, the mentality, white supremacy or the Gentile world system, you know what I'm saying? And um, there's a few white people like Michael Moore and a couple of others that kind of have hinted to that even in his stupid white man thing, you know what I mean, and his stupid um, white man thing. But it's not just the white man because there's a lot of other people, original peoples, who have bought into these, these lies, you know what I'm saying, and who now are even out front more than the white man, you know what I'm saying, or the so-called European advocating these ideas, their ideas, their system, you understand, among, among the peoples of the earth. They're, they're the accomplices. But here's what the Bible says about us. It says that the creation is delivered from suffering and death. So when we're looking at the, the bird strike, they're under suffering. I mean, their natural habitat, I mean, what do they have, really? You understand, when you see that man, he eats up whatever he can put some paper behind, whether legal paper and, and, and so-called tender, legal so-called tender. He puts his money and the paper. He uses paper to control nature and destroy nature. And even the paper that he uses came from nature. So he's insane. But, but we are part, we are members of this collective unconsciousness. So we have to come out of Babylon. That collective unconsciousness equals Babylon. You understand? That's, that's one way of qualifying for your heart and your mind what the scriptural, biblical Babylon is and what it is like. So here it says that they're delivered, that the creation must be delivered from suffering and death. So this also gives them more of a green Christianity or ecological approach to the Rastafari revelation, which truth be told, already had that focus from the very beginning. You understand? Know even the whole conservation idea. We see Ethiopia, even at that early day and age, advocating principles of con conservation. Even Ethiopia itself as a manifestation in this dispensation coming from 3,000 years is a testimony of conservation until the careless, that careless generation. This careless generation is totally disorientated. So instead of looking to the east, as it were, they are looking to the west, as, as so many others of the, the deceived, you know, so that Satan has deceived the whole world. But here, this is kept for the sons of God. Paul says this, for I reckon, he reckons, he accounts, it, which is a, a kind of a, a process of accounting, accountability, being able to count, weighing and balancing things, man being the true computer. Paul is saying, I reckon. So when you read this and take it to heart, you must also reckon. You know what I'm saying? You must, you must uh, calculate and compute, count the course. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, the sufferings of this present time, are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. This, this is a meditation in itself. You understand? Um, and we want to speak on meditation as well because we have to use the time that we have, you know what I mean, in order to strengthen ourselves against the time to come. And one place that we need to focus on, you understand, um, is the spiritual and the psychological in our mind state because we're daily bombarded, you understand, with a lot of, you know, with a lot of psycho Babylon, you know, a lot of psycho babble. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy. You see, most folks don't think so. They think opposite. The system tells you opposite. So most folks don't think that the suffering of this present time are, are, are you know, they think that you've got to do this, what you get, this is how you, it got to go. 
You know what I'm saying? They are the, the sheep. They are the lost. But the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared. We can't compare it with the glory, with the true glory. Like we can't compare what the earth really looked like with the earth today. Think about it. You know, we're seeing how the earth is being destroyed over, say, 40, 100, 200 years where they have actual maybe pictures and other documentation that can prove it for all skeptical eyes and, 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 and hearts and minds and everything like that. So we have evidence of, even in modern times, how the earth has been destroyed from its present glory in the name of Leviathan in the name of this global corporatism, so forth and so on. You know, you call it capitalism if you want. You know, you can call it that. You know, but what they do is they try to sideline the argument. They psychologically polarize people in politics. You know what I'm saying? In politics, which are two different soul types. That's why they have, usually have two major type of parties. You know what I'm saying? Because they get it down to a system here in the West. But there are glories which shall be revealed it didn't say to us. Notice what it said. It didn't say to us. It says in us. This is the deep part. Not that the glory is going to reveal to us, but the glory is going to be revealed in us. In I and I. For the earnest expectation of the creature, the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Brothers and sisters, this verse right here in Romans chapter 8, um, verse uh, 19, one day I was reading this. I went over this. I think I heard about something with some animals or creatures that were being um, brutalized, and like, like, like this right here. Um, this is right here. Animals uh, lament. The prophet denounces that this is this, this, is this one Christian um, tract, some German Christians up here. You know, but even these German Christians right here, they... They had, I think the movement is based on some, some, some Germans behind it, but this is, um, what's this called right here? This is uh, some, some universal spirit. It's called the universal spirit. And they're talking about what's going on. The prophet denounces the suffering of millions of animals which have been tormented and abused in unspeakable ways by human beings. I, I just think they, they should put a quote around human beings often brutally murdered by them. He gives the animals a voice which also wants to speak to your heart. What caused this thousands of years disdain of animals? The prophet uncovers the background in these atrocities based on witnesses from the old and new times. At the same time, he rehabilitates the prophets of the Old Testament and Christ, who is Jesus of Nazareth, steadfastly spoke up for the animals. This is interesting, that, that Christ actually spoke up for the animals. You know what I'm saying? Yeshua made no distinction between human beings and animals. Some would think that he did, but he made no distinction between them. For the commandment said, and still says today, you shall not, they have kill. We can argue that murder, but let's just keep it as it is. It is a general statement which means we should kill neither human beings nor animals. You understand? Which means that in other words, we should not murder human beings or animals straight up, because that's not how... It was in the beginning. That's not, that's not the perfect, you know what I'm saying? That's not the perfect pattern of creation. It's not, you know? And the Bible reports that during the feeding of the 5,000, Yeshua assembled, gave the assembled people bread and also fish. According to Mark, we read, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people, and he divided the two fish among them all. Are, not, are fish not also animals? Some may ask, some may ask, and this is my word, we read what really happened. We read what really happened. My disciples brought me bread and grapes, to be multiplied. On that day, dead fish were also offered to me in order to be multiplied. As I took this dead substance into my hands, I explained to the people that the power 
potential of the Father, the high power of life was gone from it for the most part, and that I would not create live fish so that they may be killed again. I explained to the people that life is in all life forms and that man should not kill them deliberately. That's our point, the not kill, not murder. Deliberately is legally defined as murder. The people, especially the children, looked at me very sadly. They could not understand me because they lived for the most part from fish, bread, and little else. And then I spoke to them in the following sense. The energies of the earth are still maintaining the dead fish. And so I will not give you living fish from the spirit of the Father, but from the energy of the earth. I will create for you fish that are dead, that is, poor in vibration. They will never be a life and cannot be killed. I will show you how living things taste bread and fruits, and in comparison with them, the taste of the dead food. And from the energies of the earth, I created for them fish which bore little spirit substance. I gave them the dead fish, and at the same time, I offered them bread and fruits to eat so that they could recognize the difference between living and dead nourishment, between highly vibrating and low vibrating food. In this and similar ways, I taught the people. Now, this is just a portion from this little track right here. And the ones will say, well, where is that in the Bible, so forth and so on? It is in tune. It, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is in harmony with what we have in the Gospels when properly interpreted. And here's... Here, here's Here's a, here's a key example where Paul is explaining right here, he's explaining in verse 19, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, I don't go in, I don't really go into this, but I had, um, I had a monkey, you understand, I had a monkey, uh, uh, my, my nana had a monkey, right, named actually Jerome, anyway. Um, when I see this here and I see those things, you know, if you have a, a pet, you know, an, 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 or an animal, you, know, and you care for that animal, you see that animal as living, and, and, you know, it bothers you. And when I read this particular verse right here, what was so very interesting about this, um, the charger, please, what was so interesting about this, I hope I can continue this reasoning in this particular section, because I see we have to recharge it, so we're going to have to probably take a pause for the cause on it. I, because what I wanted to say is about this particular verse right there, I, I cried. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, people say, oh, that's not too whatever, you know, crazy folks. No, Jesus wept, Jesus laughed, right? The Lord laughs in heaven. So if you, if you don't weep, if, if you cannot express, you know, if you cannot express that, Something is wrong with your spirituality. It doesn't mean you walk down the street and crying all over the place or whatever like that, especially, you know, as, as sons. But on a certain higher spiritual consciousness, especially when you're in that state of true worship or that true, that true spiritual meditation, that true spirit where his, his spirit does what? His spirit mingles with our spirit, you understand, becoming one spirit, you know. And... um, um his spirit mingles with um, our spirit becoming one spirit. So if you don't feel those things, something is really, really up. You know what I mean? So, so you know, try to take, try to take a moment, you know, was to enjoy the spiritual view. You know, try to take a moment to enjoy the spiritual view. Let's see if we can get this. Give us a moment. You want to keep it running straight through? Let's let's see this right here. Mm-hmm. All right, that should, there we go. All right, yeah. All right, yeah. Um, so when I read this part, I, I wept within myself, I, I, you know, um, because what I, what, I, what I heard the Spirit say to me, he said, do you understand this verse, verse 19? Do you understand this verse, verse 19? I think we've lost, we as Rastafari have also really lost ground, you know, on those um ecological issues, 
that we first was pointing consciousness to through our words, through our, the poetry, through the music, through the song, and through a lot that a lot of the earlier Rastafari, even this generation, but it seems like it was more so maybe 10, 20 years ago by comparison into holistic, into organic, so forth and so on. And we've lost track of that. You know, yes, there's a political aspect, psychological slash political aspect that must be dealt with and overcome. But we're also forgetting the real um, theology of his majesty, you know, and his majesty's um, example concerning the creature. Halle Selassie's example concerning the, the animal life or the creature life, you know, and how th these pets of, of his and how he interacted, we can say, with him, like Daniel and the lions then and, and cared for them. It was like a garden of Eden. You know, those particular um, pets of his majesty, which were from the collection of original creation of Ethiopia, you know, and, and how p particular areas of land were conserved. And this was far before a lot of this Western New Age, so-called post-60s um, interest in, in nature and in creation and, and this new spirit, which overall is good, but the, the, the negative aspect of it is still on a low vibration. You understand? It's still on a low vibration, and a lot of it is being um, commercialized. You understand, has become things that, that the powers that be, you understand, that be the big corporations who are still also the polluters and the destroyers of the earth. They recognize this is what the people want. This is what they want to buy. They want to hear these words. They want to hear green, so forth and so on. And we want to see green. So you see these two contexts of green. If I say green to you, what do you think about? Are you thinking about the greenness of the earth? Or are you going to think about money? You know, dollar bills, y'all. You understand? Which one are you really going to think about? And this is where you begin to um, test your knowledge, you know, in your meditation. Test your knowledge and meditate and think on these things and pray on the spiritual strength to even overcome these things and to cast these things out of, out of your spirit, out of your mind. You know what I mean? Honestly speaking, when I say here green, sometimes you might think on um, money. And then you have to deny those thoughts. You've got you to recognize, ain't that something? Green means so much more than that. It's like the word black. You know, so that kind of shows you how you've already been polluted. You understand how you already have um, en ended up in a sinful world and been contaminated. So you have to detox and decontaminate even the, the spiritual aspect in addition to what you eat and what you think and also how you speak. You have to observe your thoughts. You know, because there's destiny in words. Christ shows that in his teaching as well. So we just, we're pointing to the holistic aspect of the good news of the gospel, the king of kings and his Christ. Because unless we look at it in the fullness, in the full knowledge of it, we will fall short or remain falling short of that glory of God. And we are told right here that it's... We're told right here concerning the glory of God, where is it right here, concerning the glory of God, that we may, may be also glorified together as joint ears with Yeshua HaMoshe, with the Jesus Christos. Now, for the earnest expectation of the creature, in other words, the, the animals are waiting for the manifestation of the Son of God, of the Bani Ha Elohim of the You understand? They're waiting for the manifestation of the children of God. So if we who say, I'm a child of God, well, the, the creatures are waiting for your manifestation. So look even how that has gotten confused. People can say in a counterfeit Christianity they're a child of God, yet they don't make a connection with nature and creation. Some are beginning to. You understand, some of the, the, the white churches especially are beginning to see that kind of connection that way. If we're talking all this stuff about the Bible, how are we treating animals and, and, and have a new appreciation, so-called, for, um, for, for, for nature? You know what I mean? Because you have to remember a lot of them in the counterfeit interpretation believe that if you appreciate nature too much, you are like, like part of some counterculture kind of a thing. 
you understand, and didn't appreciate the American globalist money-making economy, you know, and a lot of these thoughts still remain to this day, but more people are open to the whole organic, holistic thing, mostly because of media and mostly because, you know, a lot of Dr. Oz shows and these shows on TV and Oprah, so forth and so on, you know, but there's still, that is good, but this is better. You know what I'm saying? The manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was not, excuse me, the creature was made subject. The creature was made subject to vanity. What's the vanity? All, all this nonsense right here. This, this is one thing that we have right here. This, this tortured, tortured monkey. And, and, you, and you see a lot of the, and not just that, the animals, they tortured black men. And still do, you know what I mean, and black women and black children, you know what I'm saying? And because nobody really said nothing about that until black people began to try to change things for themselves, you know what I'm saying, to some extent, and we were somewhat successful. Now everybody runs and rides that bandwagon, and then black people ride their bandwagon and forget that we still have a just cause, you know what I'm saying? But most of them don't know who they are. And because they don't know that they're based in Israel, they don't know the full, the full truth of our Ethiopian Hebrew heritage, that's why they perish, because they don't have a clear idea of their identity. You know what I'm saying? Their identity. We saw a little clip speaking about identity. Um, Oprah's, Oprah's Steadman. You know what I'm saying? Oprah's Steadman. Steadman. He has a new book out about, about identity. I caught a couple of his interviews. I'm saying... Has he been listening to our vids and stuff? But he's he's trying to stay away from the religious and stuff and the race-based stuff. He's trying to, you know, um, I say make a product out of it on on a certain level. But it's still interesting because when they find out that these ideas that many of us are speaking about are true, they try to delete God out of it. They try to delete, um, you know, um, 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 God, the divinity and humanity out of it and try to take the, the wisdom of it and, 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 and make a product on, on a certain level out of it. They try to take the principal idea and try to divorce the, 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 the divinity from it, God, and the humanity, the blackness from it, and try to re, um, repackage it on a certain level. Now, I'm not saying this totally about Steadman's new book, uh, Identity, but it's kind of interesting. But still, it is true. The first thing one needs to know is the identity. He feels he knows, like a lot of Negroes, a lot of Boulay middle-class Negroes figure that, well, he knows all he needs to know about who he's racist, he's black, and, but more than that, uh, my dream, my vision, so forth and so on. We're going we're gonna to address that as well, John Willem, but that's a part of the vanity. So the creature was made subject to vanity. The creature was made subject to vanity, you know, um, not willingly. In other words, these creatures... If they thought in their head like man thinks and said, hey, man is very, very bad, and man ain't going to become the sons of God that we expect, so why don't we get together and deal with them? If, if the creation, the creature thought of that, man with all of his knowledge and everything else, if the Almighty gave the creature's license, they would be able to accomplish that feat. But what the creatures are looking forward and are expecting the true sons of God to get up, stand up for John's rights. So they was made subject to vanity, not willingly. Not, they, they didn't sign on to this willingly, right? But by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. So within the, the animal creation, there is a knowledge you know, of him. You understand? Know and there's a hopeful expectation, you understand, know for the true sons and daughters of God to get up and stand up, to rise up, because the creature itself also shall be delivered. The creature itself must be delivered. So they're talking about save the planet. Notice that. They talk about Earth Day, right? You know, what about the animal creation, you see? They don't want to really deal with that too much because they make too much money off of that. And they feed these lower and demonic desires, you understand, um, off of that. So, so they don't want to say anything about that. But it's a clear sign indication with the bird strikes that something is going on. There's a whole magnetic um, shift, 
you understand, or a lot of the birds are becoming maybe disorientated, you understand, or perhaps certain things are changing, but man can't recognize that these things are changing. You see, man doesn't see it yet, you understand, but pray for the animals, but more than, than even just that, pray to understand and act on this word, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. So here this bondage that the creatures are in, that the animals are in, almost all of them, is a bondage of corruption. Think about that idea of bondage and, and children of Israel, bondage. It doesn't always have to be an overt manifestation of this, but sometimes it can be more subtle and in spirit and in truth. So they're going to be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So the manifestation of the children of God is interconnected, you understand, with the environment. It's interconnected with the animal creation. But the delay of it, think about this for a moment, the delay of it, how many ones and ones really um, recognize that they are the children of God? Or recognize, if they do recognize, recognize the significance of what is said right here, you know what I'm saying, concerning the adoption with the Holy Father, with Abba Kedus, and the creation, suffering, and bondage. You see that connection there? It, it, it's, there. it's almost like saying that, the, that our being born again as true children of God means that one of the first things we must become conscious of is the suffering of creation. Not just human suffering only, but also the animal suffering. Now think about how many Christians out there that are totally oblivious to one or both of those, of those sufferings. Some are oblivious to the animal suffering, but perhaps because they profit from it or they're addicted to it. You understand, like, like the, the Burger King, McDonald's, these kind of idol stores. Think about how many creatures have to be, um, have to be subjected to vanity for that because they believe that that is the only way they're going to get nutritious food. But remember we read about the dead vibration low or low vibration? You understand? They get food, but they get low vibrating food that consequently vis-a-vis -vis manifests in other diseases. So we can see the sickness also is on the rise, the pestilence. Now just think about the connection between it. You understand? The connections are very crystal and very clear. You understand? In a sense, spiritual, scriptural, Bible prophecy can also be seen when, when you have the eye to see it as being scientific. You understand? Showing a order. You understand? There's, there's an order of, of, of this dis-ease. It be, but it begins with, first of all, the human and the animal suffering is very much connected. But the key to both is the sons of God. The key to both is our new birth and our new action. You understand? First must come the new birth. You understand? Then comes the new action. We have to reorientate ourselves. But first we have to learn how we're disorientated. You understand? What basically happened in, a, you know, in summary. Some, some want to go deep in certain things, but sometimes you can look at the basics and recognize the principles without going into all the different, if you know what causes a certain disease, you understand, then you can easily diagnose that without knowing everybody's backstory, so to speak. I, I say that to keep it on the point of growing in the word, you understand, and not going too far, being too far um, to the left or the right, but staying within the, you know, staying, staying on track. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. For we know. Do you know this? No, no, really, yes, actually, do you know, do you say to yourself, man, I mean, look at it, man, the whole creation is groaning. I mean, the, the creation, everything, human beings, animals, everybody's groaning and travailing, man, you know, in pain. You know, or, or are you oblivious? Like, man, I can't think about that, man. I got, I got to do me. Yeah, you're going to do you. You're going to get done. You know, I mean, I can't say son because son is inappropriate there if you have that mental attitude. It might rhyme, but, you know, we don't do it for the sake of rhyme. You know, we're saying we do it to redeem the time. And not only they, but ourselves also. 
And so it's not only the, the, the creature, the animal, you understand? But it's also ourselves. It's also ourselves also. So you see how they treat the animal, how there's an unconsciousness to the animal creation. In fact, I said this before, I'll say it again, that, um, you know, if we didn't have, almost like someone say, if I and I didn't have so much blood clot work, you know, I and I joined PETA, you know, you know join one of these other sort of organizations on a certain level. I know they call them echo terrorists and all that, whatever. You understand? Some, you know, what, what I learned from my American experience you know, you have to have the courage of your convictions. You understand? And that's the reason why the system as it exists, exists. Christ says that if your righteousness does not exceed that of the Pharisees and scribes, you will in no wise, no wise, no how, enter into the kingdom. You see? So if we are to enter into the kingdom, the true new age, our righteousness, our our earnest, you understand, work and pray have to be about. You see, that is our credit. That's how we build up our credit score in the, the, the Mengista Samayat, you understand, eyes, in the eyes of the kingdom of heaven. That's how we build up our spiritual credit, our spiritual credit rating. You know, some of them talk about, my credit score is good, yeah, but, but that, that, that currency you know, that currency will be out of power. That currency will be shut down. There will be no power in that currency very soon now. You understand? And they've been telling us this in many different ways. They, the media, so forth and so on. They're trying to prepare and save themselves. What are you and, and your kind of people, you understand? What are you and your kind doing? You know, each one according to their kind. So it's not only they. It's not only the animal creatures, the animal's creation, but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the Spirit. This is interesting because we just had the Passover, Fasica 2012, and also we discussed and talked briefly on the first fruits or the wave offering.